today on CityCast Madison. Did digital kill the radio star? Well, not if you ask the coolest little station in the nation. That's the motto of WVMO, the voice of Monona community radio station. WVMO 98.7 FM was named Radio Station of the Year by the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association, even though it's tiny. So what's making this little powerhouse so successful? We asked two WVMOers of different generations to spill their secret. WVMO founder and Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Lindsay Wood Davis, and a 13-year-old radio host named Beatrix. It's Tuesday, August 15th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Lindsay, hello. Hello, Bianca. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm I'm pleased to be uh, on this new endeavor. This is great. Yes. And you are kind of a star. Uh, you grew up in radio and are from a family of broadcasters. You've seen a lot in the business. You're in the Wisconsin Broadcasters Hall of Fame. And for your retirement, you started a community station right here in Monona. What do you see as the future of radio? Local radio. The more local you make it, the better radio does. The The world of, of big corporate radio, and I was part of that for a very long time, has, in my estimation, lost the string. They've forgotten that it's about individual people's lives. And that's what VMO does. It is not just local, it is hyper-local. Uh, we love to talk. Our IDs are from people on in Monona and Madison's East Side, and they say their name and they say the street that they live on. We have little kids' voices on the air. It's very, very local. We're talking about things that happen at the at the farmers market and at San Damiano, and that they're going to repebble a street. All this very, very local stuff. To me, that is the future of radio that's going to remain successful. And have you seen like the power of the local programming, like the impacts of that in people's lives? People maybe share that with you? They do on a very regular basis. Uh, an alder the other day sent me a note saying, and she was one of those early on who thought, I have no idea why Monona would want a radio station. What would we do with that? And she said today she realizes that it is often the nexus of our community life, that it is the hub uh, around which the wheel turns, a term I loved, by the way, as you might guess. That's what it was meant to be. It was meant to be a central point for the community. The basic element of our programming is our locality. It's talking about all those local things. But when we go to music, and we go to music a lot, it's Americana and Roots and then a whole lot of volunteer programming from things like, oh, big band, jazz. We have a great polka program. Come on. Oh, you got it all. And and those people are winning awards, statewide awards. That's what's so fun to me. Uh, VMO is the station of the year for the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. And you win that by entering 23 different categories. And in those 23 different categories, we won 26 awards this year. And that's all local folks. We program our station locally. In fact, here's the three corner stool of WVMO. We are community owned, literally owned by the city of Monona. Right. We are locally programmed 100%. And we are volunteer driven. Yes, there is one and a half paid people. I think that's what it is. But we are volunteer driven. This thing couldn't operate. <laughs> who won't hold that one and a half person against you <laughs> in terms of who's And they're great running. people. <laughs> yes. Well, all both one and a half of them. I mean, you mentioned you, you won, you know, the the top award, um, best radio station in the state. Are you the smallest radio station in Wisconsin? We're pretty close. We're part of a class called a uh, low power FMs, uh, LPFMs. It is an FCC category where we have 100 watts and our antenna is mounted w up to 100 feet. Our tower, our antenna is mounted mightily on top of the Monona Fire Department hose drying tower. 
know. Oh my goodness. There are probably 20 or 30 LPFMs in Wisconsin. And we are, as we got called, the coolest little station in the nation. I honestly, I don't know if I've heard a better tagline. It's pretty powerful. It is. And it was it was dropped on us by a, a now passed away, but a great radio consultant who was one of the first people to ever listen to us online. Early on in the literally the first months, I would call friends of mine who had been consultants in the business around the country. And I go, hey, we're going to do this station. Here's how to listen to us online. Let me know what you think. And so literally two weeks later, he says, Lindsay, I've been listening to that station of yours like you asked. And I said, what do you think, Jim? And he said, that's the coolest little station in the nation. <laughs> and, and I laughed so hard. And then I immediately stole the line. I ran to the station and told Tom Tuber. And within the, like 12 hours, we had a promo on the air. And then the WVMO jingle gals are sort of 1940s Andrew singers who are just the most fun women, uh, they had a jingle on within a day and a half. So, yeah. It, You've got it's that been buzz. You've got the buzz. And you're like, when you hear something good, you immediately, you oh, took yeah. that electricity you know, no and you sent it that. off to the jingle gals at that. That's amazing. Um, and you mentioned, you know, someone listening over the internet. You don't hear this sometimes, but did internet kill the radio star? The internet overall has simply added to the competition that radio has. Understand that more than 90% of Americans still listen to radio in an average week. Mm -hmm. I can go on my radio platform here. And do they it. still do. Radio very, <laughs> radio very much exists and is, uh, I will say healthy, but it has more and more and more competition. I go back to the days where my dad was a, a great proponent of AM because all listenership was to AM. And he just had the hardest time accepting that FM might be competition for AM. And so it, radio has always added eight track or, and then a CB radio was going to kill radio. We were told radio for a long time was technically the, whatever the best sound was, it could be found on radio. When uh, digital came about, that was an attack on radio that radio did not respond to very well. Um, they have later, but there was a lot of uh, covering their butts. Um, radio uh, didn't necessarily want to go to high definition because, gee, that would cut down on my signal to the benefits of somebody else's signal. So there's a it. The industry for many many years was really an industry of small business owners, men and women. That was what it was nationwide. That's what our family stations were. Consolidation, which uh, I spent a lot of my career helping groups consolidate. That was part of what I was as a management consultant. Uh, I can look back and say that consolidation was bad for the radio industry. Wall Street and uh, the investment bankers and the vulture capitalists, they all they all love that stuff. The vulture capitalists. <laughs> they are. I can I can show you the scars, but but they took away localism. The radio industry just doesn't like to admit that. But it's the truth. This one's for all the project managers, software developers, and anyone who might be looking for better ways to build teams and manage work. Don't miss out on Madison's first ever hosting of Scrum Day, a one-day conference dedicated to Scrum, the Agile Project Management Framework. Yeah, it's a rugby term, but it's for anyone who manages teams. Scrum Day is coming up on September 14th at the Alliant Energy Center. There are special breakout sessions for executives, product owners, scrum masters, and developers. Plus, activities to make growing your network easier. And you can expect top agile expert speakers, including thought leaders on Kanban. Are you ready to level up? Get inspired. Get your tickets at scrumday.org. What draws people to want to do their own radio show? 
we call each other radio rats. We are people. People uh, have a, a love of the business. Now, I don't know. I, you know, I've never sold insurance. I've never been a plumber. I'm not an aerospace engineer. I can't tell you what other industries have this sort of internal yaya that says I am a radio rat. But we are. I'll give you an example of another person who joined us early on, a true pro. Uh, uh, we had had a woman named Carol Horning, who used to work for me as a traffic director. Traffic has nothing to do with cars and trucks. Traffic is laying out the log, the programming log that says what elements are going to take place. Carol was as good as there's ever been at this job. She went on to become the business manager at In, in Business Magazine in Madison. And she'd been there for a while. And we knew we were going to get the station. And we called her up and said, Carol, would you like to help with doing traffic for a low power FM? She says, oh, yeah. When can we meet? Oh. It was immediate. <laughs> and so she became a volunteer traffic director. Well, let me tell you, to get a real traffic director in at our little radio station was a wonderful thing. At the very first volunteer meeting in Monona, where we had like 80 people show up, which was pretty incredible. I told them that while this was a, going to be a little radio station, and we are, that it was going to be a real radio station. And we were going to treat it like a real radio station. We were going to run it by the rules. We we're going to make it sound good. Speaking of sound, one of the great things was that we had what uh, Bob Miller, the mayor of Monona at the time, who was a broadcaster. Uh, he had managed WKOW-TV. He understood the business of broadcasting, so it was great having him there. Anyway, we managed to put together a team of engineers to help us with this, and he called them Lindsay's Million Dollar Engineering Team because you couldn't have gone and hired these guys. This is the, the head of engineering for Wisconsin Public Broadcasting, the head of engineering for Midwest Family, probably the top tower and antenna guy in the country who happens to live in Cottage Grove. Um, these are high quality people. And they're doing it out of the love of their, you know, love of the radio and of their hearts. They didn't get paid a dime. They're radio rats, uh, just like the rest of us. And we stick together. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. And and, and it was a, a little uh, our gang comedy. Hey, kids, let's put on a show. It was a, a sort of electronic barn raising. And, and we did. Yes. And we bought re we bought really good equipment. We got a very nice little studio. It's a very small studio befitting our little radio station, but it's a really good studio filled with great equipment. It's mighty. It's mighty. Yes. And we spoke to perhaps <laughs> Madison's youngest DJ, Beatrix of Bee's Buzz. Oh, B. 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 She is she is just amazing. Um, uh, B does an interview show, Bee's Buzz. Uh, she does bees books. Um, we like the sound of young people on the air. We have a number of multi-generational situations, Bianca. Our volunteer uh, coordinator is Joe Martin. He's a wonderful guy, but his daughter, Eliza. Now she has a program on the air in the evening. Um, one of my favorite groups are the Perrys. So Jeff Perry one of our original volunteers, and Jeff does This Week in Music History, and now today in music history as well. Well, his father, Rod Perry, who was the person who hired Tom Tuber back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, uh, Rod's been on the air probably more than, well over 60 years. He does great songs, great singers, and big bands on Sunday afternoon. And Henry, Rod's grandson, Jeff's son, who's a regular on Jeff's show, is also very involved. We have three generations of one family on WVMO. And here's the whole thing. To, to somebody just finding out about it, this must sound like toy radio. It's not. It sounds great. I can attest. We were all incredibly impressed with Beatrix of Bee's Buzz, you know, and and talking with her was was wonderful. And that that is a good show. And she's in middle school. Yeah. Yeah, she's really, and she just won a third place statewide for best interview. Yeah, I was lucky enough to be a guest on Bee's Buzz, and I had a chance to ask Bee some questions too. Here's what she had to say. I want to know what made you want to do a radio show? So it was actually um, my mom organized this uh, walk to school day thing for when I was like, I think it was first grade. And um, 
the radio station asked me to do a PSA for it. And um, they like kept asking me to come back and do more stuff. And then eventually they were like, oh, hey, does V want her own show? And we thought they were joking, but they weren't. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you're on Voice of Monona and you're speaking to folks locally. You know, what's something you love about Monona? Um, I love how it's kind of like a community, you know, like um, people help each other out. And it's just like a small town. And it's also really nice because um, where I live, we don't get much traffic. So like you can like in during summer, you could just like play dodgeball on the street and only have to like get o- off the street for cars like twice. And at night, it's super quiet. Like there's no car no- noises at all. And then you can see the stars. Yeah. And we also have a lot of really nice beaches in Monona. What's your favorite part about having a radio show? Probably, like, get new experiences, listen to people's stories, and share them with Monona. What do you think is drawing kids to interest in radio? Do you think it, you know, when they have Snapchat and TikTok and everything else? Well, here's the thing. It's, uh, they're performers. Some, you know, some people are performers. Bianca, maybe you are. I don't know. Here I am. (laughs) Right? You're behind the microphone. So she is a performer and she's a good performer and she hones her craft. It isn't just, hey, I want to be on there. She's, how do I get better? Who do I go talk to who will be a better interview? She's after trying to be better. And you know what? You can't ask that of any anybody, anything more of any age. Mm -hmm, That's what you want. And that's why I'm excited to talk to you because you are, you are a heavyweight champ. I can, I can feel it. I can tell it. It's, it's just wonderful to talk with you. Well, that's very nice. And it was, yeah. And it was wonderful to talk to V. As you mentioned, your community radio station is kind of unique because it's owned by the city of Monona. Yes, it is. Government funded media. What would Elon Musk say? <laughs> Just kidding. That's a well, that's a great question. And we have to respond to that. It's something that we need to keep aware of. So, for instance, here's a, a response to that. No religion, none, no politics. We don't do politics. That's important because it is not just governmental, but it is truly community owned. So we're going to stay away for some, from some things. We don't do controversy. Now, I'll tell you, if uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary is going to do their festival after the Memorial Day Parade, will we promote that? Absolutely. That's a community festival. On the other hand, if somebody is going to, some other church is going to do a tent revival, will we promote that? Nope, we won't. That's religion rather than a festival. Sure. Uh, and so we have to be careful with that. Now, Do we air the city council meeting? No, we don't, which surprised a lot of people. But what we do is we promote what's going on with the city council so that more people will attend or will uh, watch the greatly improved coverage we have on the on the Monona YouTube channel. Is it ever tricky navigating the bureaucracy if if you're owned by the city of Monona? It has not been whatsoever. That's a good question. There's a community media committee. All the city committees are chaired by one of the alders. And the city council has, from the beginning, been incredibly supportive of VMO. And, you know, when you win these big statewide awards, it doesn't hurt. From the beginning, I'll go back to Bob Miller. Uh, Bob and our current mayor, Mary O'Connor, all realized that VMO would be a great promotional vehicle for Monona. And, you know, we just went through this huge, big increase in housing values all over, but highlighted in the New York Times, the greatest increase in housing values was not only Madison, but they specified Monona. Monona is a pretty cool place to live today. And speaking about vehicles, I understand you have a very neat new vehicle (laughs) that I'm obsessed with. (laughs) <laughs> yes, we do. You know, lots of radio stations historically and TV stations, they have their remote broadcast vehicles. Our remote broadcast vehicle is a fully restored 1957 Good Humor ice cream bike. It's one of those things that used to travel around town. And in this case, we believe in Monona itself. And we restored it. We 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 made a deal with the wonderful guy who owns uh, owns Budget Bicycles. Uh, a man in uh, in Monona named Greg Anderson, a good friend. And so we have this wonderful little ice cream bike that shows up. and It's like a magnet. You go to an event 
And people go, that's an ice cream bike. Do you have any ice cream? Well, we spent a lot, many years saying, no, we don't have ice cream. This is our remote bike. And finally, one of the people from the friends of WVMO said, you know how much money we could make if we sold ice cream bars? And I thought, really? Well, yeah. And it's all insulated. So you're doing both. <laughs> so literally they bring ice cream bars now and they sell them for an exorbitant amount and everybody buys them. It's pretty cool. Oh, I love it. You guys are so fun and you have eclectic mix of programming, lots of things happening. I have to say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Which I don't really want to. I love talking to uh, to you, Bianca. This is great fun. 98.7 WVMO or WVMO.FM on the interwebs. That was WVMO founder and Wisconsin Broadcasting Hall of Famer, Lindsay Wood Davis. We also heard from Beatrix Polly, host of Bee's Buzz. You can hear her show every first Thursday of the month at noon and 3 p.m. on WVMO. We'll toss a link in our show notes. And we're remembering WVMO superstar Tom Tuber. He was the station's original programming director, and he passed away in July. Tom, you're sorely missed. And here's what else Madison's talking about. President Biden. President Biden is coming to Milwaukee today to talk about investing in the middle class, according to the White House. The timing stands out as his visit comes right ahead of next week's first Republican presidential primary debate happening in Milwaukee. And it's also after Vice President Harris's recent visit. Sensing a theme? As promised, Wisconsin is proving to be a top priority ahead of the coming election. And it looks like Madison's top cop will not be leaving us for the Windy City. Police Chief Sean Barnes was in the running to become Chicago's chief of police, but was not selected. In other news, Dane County is reviewing its contract for employee health insurance with a subsidiary of SSM Health. That's after the health system recently announced they would no longer offer gender-affirming surgeries amid growing pressure from the Catholic Church. County Executive Joe Parisi said whatever health insurance contract they land on will include gender-inclusive surgeries. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not share this episode with someone you know who'd make a knockout radio announcer? We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Ciao.